Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program. We are in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 this time and I'm testing out my model of the SpaceX Starship as well as Super Heavy. Well, I'm not modeling everything to do with Starship and Super Heavy. It's just really three parts. It's the crew pod here. It is the, uh, well, I call it tank, but it's the Starship body there. And it is the Super Heavy tank there. So I'm not planning to work on the control surfaces. As far as engines, the Raptors that are part of the real engine pack are just fine. So I plan to use them myself and I wouldn't model those. But there are plenty of things about this that I need to fix. Uh, even though I'm expecting people to use B9 procedural wings for the fins and all, I need to make the sort of fairing bits, the parts where the fins attach to, and there's sort of a pipe along the side here. The back end of this is actually supposed to be flatter. I'm not too sure if it has a body flap anymore, but it really ought to, I think, but uh, maybe not. I, I don't know about the solar panels. Uh, we haven't gotten any update on that compared to ITS. ITS had those fan-like solar panels. Maybe it has fuel cells now, I don't know. Also, I have no idea about the RCS thruster config configuration. So the reason I'm showing you this right now is actually to ask some questions. Uh, does anybody know what the RCS configuration of this is? Uh, basically, where do the RCS ports point? Uh, so that I can build them in, right? I have no idea where the RCS ports are supposed to be. And whether it's uh, going to fuel cells with uh, like a methane oxygen fuel cell, which I could build in, or whether it's a solar panel, which would be more complicated and maybe I'll just leave you guys to slap on solar panels. But... Um, yeah, of course, the bottom here, I'm not making grid fins or fi uh, those fins or uh, anything like that. So maybe I'll make the... I think they're just static fins at the bottom that act as landing legs. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong about that. Are the fins at the bottom actuating? I don't think they are. If they're not actuating, I can, I can build them in. That's fine. And they'll act as landing legs. I think that can work. But uh, yeah... So I've, I've got these questions. The reason I decided to tackle this problem, uh, make this model, is because I actually wanted certain features that I didn't think other people would build in if they made it, and nobody would seem to be making it right now. There were uh, two versions of the ITS, but that's uh, obviously not the version that's coming about right now. Uh, so one feature is this. Um, I wanted a hatch. And actually what I was really envisioning was a hatch and then uh, from here there would be a ramp that goes down like that, you see. But that's gonna, uh, that's gonna take extra doing. Uh, but yeah, I wanted a ramp so that the Kerbals would basically be able to climb down and we could... Uh, well, I don't know about getting supplies up and down, but you get the picture. Uh, basically, there's that. And also it's fine for cargo and so we don't have to have a separate cargo version versus passenger version, though maybe I'll make a separate cargo version. But there's also another feature, uh, namely, um, well, I have to decouple, well, activate engine should, no, it doesn't do. Okay, well, that wasn't the best rendition of it. You have to activate engine and decouple at the same time, of course. But it's an escape pod if you put parachutes on it. Otherwise, it's a pretty long drop. Oh, it actually survived. I wonder how fast it was going. Okay, well now I wonder, <laughs> um, uh, how fast would it be going when it hits the ground? It's not that, I mean, it's only 136 meters. Okay, let's test it. Okay, well, I got on the abort action group this time, and we'll have to switch to it. So abort, okay, switch vessels, gets knocked out. It's pretty, going pretty fast. I don't know if in this case... Uh, oh, this time it blew up. Uh, okay, maybe we shouldn't ignite the <laughs> SRBs. Hold on. Uh, let me reload again. Revert. Now the pod... Uh, I have made an interior, but the interior doesn't seem to work right. Um, if you actually go into the interior view... I've got 20 seats in the crew pod right now. And I physically fit them in. They're actually full human-sized seats. And uh, I fit them in. It could probably fit more than that. That's uh, 20 seats pretty comfortably with plenty of room for panels and switches and whatever else you might want, supplies and such. But uh, it could fit more than that. 
and but unfortunately when I tried to use that interior it ended up over here and tilted in a weird way so I, I obviously have configured that interior wrong so I defaulted to the Mark 1-3 pod interior so there's only really three cameras and for some reason they're aimed at their next but that's not my fault I didn't configure them that way but yeah so that was weird uh, so let's try and decouple without igniting the SRBs at the bottom of this because there are oh that doesn't seem like a good thing it's fallen into the Yeah, that's probably not what we wanted to do. Um, I'm just creating all sorts of chaos here. Yeah, there are little SRBs. There's a solid fuel there, you see. And so if I activate engine, <laughs> I need to make those SRBs a little bit stronger, maybe. Probably. Anyway, anyway. It so happened to hit the ground safely last time. Wow, it really rocked the thing on the launch clamps. Okay, let's see if we can get to orbit. But again, I don't have RCS on the Starship yet. But let's make sure the engines are all working out right and everything. Okay, so let's just launch it. It's got no payload right now, so it's got plenty of delta V. You can see down there, 12,000 meters per second. We've got 37 surface raptors on the bottom of the first stage and three vacuum, three surface on the second stage. I don't know if that's still the correct configuration, but anyway, ignition. The fuel loads are the fuel loads as stated on Wikipedia for this. The thrust on the Raptors I modified, so if you take the real engine Raptors uh, with the realism overall configurations, assuming they work right for you, and uh, there's a caveat to that, but um, they'll give you 3,000 kilonewtons of thrust, which was the ITS version. I've changed them so that they only get the thrust that they were tested at in 2018, which is the last time we got an actual thrust and ISP number. So they seem they should have they should have at least this much uh, which is uh, at the 1800 kilonewtons for the surface and 1900 for the vacuum and the vacuum engine gets 375 seconds ISP in vacuum uh, you can see 330 here I think this is very reasonable and uh, you can see it lifts off the ground uh, gently I would say with the 37 engines hopefully they will be upgraded but we don't have better numbers right now so I'll just go with this now I don't think they're all supposed to gimbal I think it's only the center ones it's a tough fit I did put 37 nodes at the bottom of this and I tried to match where um, the images on the SpaceX website said they were but I couldn't quite managed that I just fit them as best I could um, but still there's little bits poking out you can see here it's not fitting perfectly and that's probably because the engine model is just a little bit too big so it's tough to fit them all on but there are 37 down there and the nodes are there though unfortunately you can't just uh, put one on and have all the symmetry work you gonna have to put them one at a time. I'm sorry. Uh, the super heavy tank has a decoupler, so it'll, you can just stage it off. You don't need a separate decoupler. And again, of course, I'll link the parts as they are right now in the video description. But there's a lot to be fixed about them, lots to do. Uh, of course, at some point, if you're using these properly, you're going to want to stop the stage, reserve fuel, and have it land somewhere. It does have a uh, control core and comms. And electric charge, it has built in 2,000 units, but it's not consuming any. I need to fix that. The control cores need to consume electric charge. I haven't got them doing that yet. 
Lots to do still. But I had questions, so... If you have any more data to provide me, that'd be great. I know people are at least interested in SpaceX's Starship, so hopefully people have been keeping up with it. Now, of course, Starship has a header tank arrangement here to shift the fuel around so it has the right balance uh, first to re-enter in a sort of shuttle-like style and then land on its tail. Um, I'm going to sort of implement a COM shifter once I get down to testing it with fins. So if you use the real engine's engines by default, and with the RO configuration, they should be way OP for this. Which is fine, you can just throttle down. Um, they'll have a lot of thrust if you put 37 on. The problem is, uh, when I tried to put them on, they seem to have liquid fuel oxidizer configurations. And that is because in the RO configuration, they didn't edit the, the um, engine module. And so I had to add that in, but that might be just for RO and 1.6.1. That might be already fixed in more recent versions of Realism Overhaul. The this model should work in more uh, recent versions of KSP. I did it in a uh, reasonably updated version of Unity. I tried to make the paneling like they have. They seem to make it out of panels, but unfortunately, there's a seam. Where it doesn't match. I've got all these problems. All Whenever I make these things, all I think about are the problems with them. It's just how it is. So what I'm going to do to reserve fuel is I'm going to stop it when the stage delta V is the same as the surface delta V. That's a good enough first approximation. I said surface delta V, I mean surface velocity. Okay, shut down and separation. I don't know why I had a signal loss with the first stage. So that's it. I mean, a very simple top there. And then we have uh, three vacuum and three surface here. I don't have nodes for those. I trust that you guys can put them on just fine. Uh, well, it says limited probe control. Well, I'll have to fix that at some point. Of course, uh, the shininess is brought to you by Textures Unlimited, so keep that in mind. It's definitely not reading the right delta V there, and that's because of the weird crew pod situation, I guess. Otherwise, um, if we take a look at the engines, this is getting 375 and 1900 kilonewtons right now. I expect that they are going to operate the engines from what we have here. They'll probably be more powerful than this. Well, it would probably be more efficient if we uh, shut down the three center engines. Though maybe it's too early to do so with the thrust to weight ratio, we'll see. Having to pitch up probably negates the efficiency. Dry mass of the body plus the pod is 120 tons. Basically as advertised. Without reserving any fuel in the first stage, it would be able to do a lunar flyby mission directly. That would be better off if uh, the engines were a little bit more powerful than I have them right now, too. But it still should be able to lift a pretty substantial payload to orbit along with whatever it has here. And uh, we have 1,606 meters per second in left, so could easily put some stuff in the what we'll call cargo bay in there and make it work out. But there's going to have to be a whole lot of testing with the whole re-entry bit and landing the first stage. There's lots of stuff going on here. But first I need to build in the RCS. I'm still sort of... I mean I could just do like with the Shinkansen make a reasonable guess where the RCS might be. You know, put some over here, put some in the back there. But maybe on the... 
sort of fearing bits that the fins go on. We could put some RCS, that might be more convenient. Anyway, so, but I decided that I'll give it to you to play around with for now. There's no node on the back here or on there, so you're gonna have to use a radial attachment point. There is a smooth collider on both, so that's at least there. Um, there's no hatch. I had trouble figuring out how to get the hatch working. I have a hatch on my Lynx uh, capsule. I tried to mimic the same thing and it keeps telling me there's no hatch. So I put the um, sort of airlock module on it and the ladder and everything. Uh, it doesn't seem to read them properly, so I have to figure out what's up with that. There's a lot. There's a lot about this that is frustrating. But anyway, progress has been made and I will continue to work on it. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.